funded by the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland with the television licence fee. In 1910, a pioneering woman named Anita Lett teamed up with several other women in her community in Bree, County Wexford to begin an organisation that would become known as the Irish Country Women's Association, or ICA for short. Now to discover more, I recently visited Bree. We're actually in Bree ICA Garden, which is actually on the site of where the, the hall was where the first ICA meeting took place in 1910. Mary Darcy of Ballyfad ICA Guild in County Wexford. Here is Breda Banville of Camrus ICA Guild, also in County Wexford. This garden, as you can see around, there's four different flower beds depicting the four seasons. Spring, summer, autumn, winter. So no matter when wow, you come to yeah. Bree, there's colour in this garden. And uh, it adds such a vibrancy to people's lives. Where you can climb Bree Hill and you can come back here and have the picnic. And you can actually nearly sense, I often sense Anita Lett's presence here. I can just visualise her at that first meeting in 1910. And she encouraging the women to get together, to stand up for one another, to educate one another, to look after their health and well-being, to initiate crafts. So this is just a wonderful place. And people come on their trips here and then they visit Anita Lett's grave. grave, which is further up the road here, just about 500 metres. And, and um, how much of a pioneer? Because, I mean, you read the accounts, it's hard to believe from, you know, from such humble beginnings, mm. you know, a, a national organisation sprung. Yes, well, I think it was Anita Lett. She had great go-ahead in her. And at that stage in Ireland, in Wexford, in Bree, there was no nurses being trained. So she came from England originally, and um, she got a number of young girls to go over and train as nurses and they came back here and worked and this was Anita Letts you know she had such vision that was Anita's some, direct yes, legacy yes, the woman. health and well-being of the people in her community and then it sprung from there From its beginnings in 1910, the Irish Country Women's Association, or ICA, which Anita Lett helped to found, aimed to offer support, education, friendship and hope to women. Non-denominational and non-political, within a few years it grew to be the biggest and most proactive women's organisation in Ireland. Now we'll hear more about its history shortly. But dealing first with modern times, nowadays there are over 400 ICA guilds or groups across the country, both in urban and rural communities. So just what kind of activities do they engage in? ICA National President Hilda Roach. There's a huge amount of stuff that goes on in guilds. Obviously arts and crafts are a huge part of ICA and have been and keeping the traditional crafts and learning new crafts. But there's also drama, book clubs, creative writing, fundraising for charities, competitions of all sorts, cookery, photography, crafts, reporting, and of course a huge part of ICA and particularly the guilds is the socialising, the friendship, the support for each other. You just meet people you would never come across otherwise. There's friendship, there's laughter, you can learn new skills, craft nights like here, you can do sports, you can do walking. There is something for everyone. Drama if you want to do drama, and you do things that you would never do otherwise. It's just wonderful, and the friendships you make are just lifelong. Anne Newton of Ashford, ICA Guild in County Wicklow, when I recently met up with her at an ICA craft night. So just how good are the friendships in the ICA? Here is Geraldine Finnegan to explain how she got involved in our Dahi ICA Guild in County Monaghan. My mum died and I was living on my own and I didn't have any sisters and that. And I was talking to one of the ladies that was in the guild and she says, Asher, come on down for the crack, you know. And I said, Asher, sure. I had thought that it was all crafts and ha you know that sort of thing and she says ah oh, not at all she went down for the crack sure and see how you get on sort of thing so um went down yes there was crafts and everything and i just got stuck into everything and 
now I have about uh, 18 sisters that I never had before. <laughs> That's <laughs> so. fantastic. Wow. You know, yeah. it's a really family. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. So, like, everybody, like, we're just like sisters. We just be there for each other, no matter what happens. And Mary Chambers of Mulrani ICA Guild in County Mayo shares her story. My husband had a, a severe incident at 40 and I had three young kids and my baby was four. And my ICA were my lifeline. Wow, yeah, that's great, yeah. isn't it? So kind of real, real community and support. Oh, yeah. Like I, he, he had a brain tumour. So he was in Beaumont for three months, in rehab three months. And some of my close friends would have taken my kids at the drop of a hat. And they did. So I never forgot that. I like the friendship that you form with different people in the ICA. It is great to be a member of ICA because you make so many good friends. And, you know, there's always something to do. So you're never bored. To me, it was nearly a lifesaver as such because it got me mixed with everybody. Well, I like the companionship that we have. We have a very nice bunch of ladies, all very helpful to each other. It's great that you meet so many people and make such good friends. It's the friendship aspect of it. It's like one big family. And the ICA is a family. Down the years, the ICA has done Trojan work to help countless worthy causes. Pauline Scully of Tala ICA Guild in County Dublin. We do knitting and we're very good at knitting Michael D's tea cosies and we sell them in the Halla Hospital to raise money for Tala Hospital for it used to be the children's hospital and now it's the active age group and we have raised thousands of euro for the Tala Hospital. Whatever we knit, whatever we knit, little cardigans or whatever, we would to be all done voluntary and we'd bring them up and sell them at Christmas and Easter in Tala. And uh, the last time we were up there, we raised 18,000 euro. 18,000 yeah. euro? Yeah. Oh yeah. my God, you yeah. say it in a matter of seconds. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well we done. Did. Six weeks, we did, everyone did their couple of hours voluntary and sold to everybody and anybody <laughs> that was going in. And we did raise that amount. And in a similar vein, Margaret Dean of Drimmer League ICA Guild in County Cork had this to say. Our main event every year is uh, we have a Christmas party for the senior citizens and we <coughs> fundraise for that. We have a raffle and then we all prepare the, the salads and the baking and all that and we get the local butcher and central supermarket to cook the meat for us and slice it and prepare it and we give them a cold plate and a dessert. We have music, sing song and it's the best day of the year for us in Drummer League. That's so, brilliant. So and I can't say enough good about ICA really. clear from prior commentary is that the ICA contributes hugely to the quality of life for countless members, their families and communities and the wider world beyond. This documentary aims to investigate just how much. This is the ICA's story. The Irish Country Women's Association. ICA for short. It's an organisation for women of all ages over the 18 years of age. It's the biggest women's organisation in the country. I see it's great for personal development and having fun and enjoying ourselves. There's something for everybody in ICA. So should it be dancing or yoga or Pilates to crafts of all description. There's such a diversity in it. You know, there's so many things. You'll definitely find something that you like and you'll meet wonderful people who are there with you all the time. Yeah, 100%. I enjoy ICA. There's a total mix of women, and it's women supporting women. And we'll hear more later in this programme about the various activities which countless ICA groups are doing nowadays. But first we need to briefly investigate the ICA's roots. When it first began, the ICA was known as the Society of the United Irish Women. ICA National President Hilda Roach. 
The United Irish Women, later called the Irish Country Women's Association, was founded in 1910 by a small group of well-educated women in Bree County, Wexford. And the aim was to improve the standard of life in rural Ireland through education and cooperative effort. And the organisation was, and still is, non-denominational and non-political. Their aims were horticulture, uh, hygiene, education of women in the community. And they decided that they would do something about it. Mary Summers of Oilgate ICA Guild in County Wexford. Here is Mary Darcy. They actually could see the need that was there for women to be able to support themselves. As well, so it was about producing eggs and selling them and yes. raising poultry and stuff like yes. that. All yes. of that as practical, easy means of helping yeah. them to make a few bobs for themselves. The early initiatives encouraged and educated women in growing vegetables, keeping poultry, beekeeping, fruit bottling, cheese making to improve health through better diet and nutrition and to generate income for women from their surplus produce. Hilda Roach. Now aside from helping to give women extra sources of income, the ICA also focused heavily on education for them. Summer schools were held in different venues and the first one was in Slevenamon in 1929 in Tipperary. Um, women at that time had little or no formal education so there were all sorts of classes and they, I, my understanding is they sort of camped in Sleeve Naman with very basic conditions, but that was one of the ways that ICA developed. And the next major step forward for the ICA came in the 1950s, when the Kellogg Foundation gifted an adult education college to the ICA. This college, named On Green On, was officially opened in 1954 and is located in Termenfecken, County Louth. Breed a Banville of Camros ICA Guild in County Wexford. Women went on trains and well they didn't have cars, so it was basically trains or maybe buses. It was I, I wouldn't think buses, right? Yeah, to on Green on it's called, a sunny place. And uh, where they went maybe for a, a, a week. Sure, look at all their, all their uh, what's the word, coming together. All their holidays. Yeah, I was coming together, all the birthdays were coming together. And they had courses on everything and anything, you name it. Yeah. Like, you know, baking, uh, cooking, uh, boiling, sewing, um, sewing, crafts. Weaving. Yeah, all gardening, practical stuff. All, gardening. all stuff that they needed to do back home. You know, educating their children, everything like that. But yeah. today it's absolutely thriving on Green On. Women go for weekends, midweek, and like we're gone very advanced now. We have all sorts of, of courses, mindfulness, yoga, tai chi. Yeah, all, everything. <laughs> and we'll hear more later in this programme about the sterling work occurring in On Green On nowadays. But staying for the moment with the ICA's history. From the 1950s onwards, it got heavily involved in promoting rural electrification and also pipe water into rural homes in order to help make women's lives easier. Mary Summers. In the 1950s then, you're talking about electrification. The ICA, you know, with all those newfangled washing machines and the dishwashers and the water inside, they set up a model kitchen to show women, you know, how the appliances worked and, you know, how good, useful they were and all like that. And they brought that around the country, you know, so that was kind of encouraging, the, you know, the electrification of homes and water and all like that. And then oh, in the poor. 60s, the water came in mm -hmm. because they had to turn on the tap in the 60s. They brought that on in the Just mansion the house in Dublin. Tap, tap. Yes. What was that about? It was Mary? about getting water into houses because ma most people still had wells outside. They were drawing water. Yeah. So it was to get water into the houses. Mary Darcy. Here's Kira Cronin of Balnora ICA Guild in County Cork. The ICA campaigned very strongly for rural electrification and then water as well. You know, they campaigned nationally and they campaigned locally with the county councils until really you know, the whole country was electrified and there was running water passing every door. It was so important for the women in the home. You see, up to then, there was no priority given to women in, in many ways. late 1960s onwards, 
The ICA played a key role in the struggle for women's rights, with no less than three ICA members on the first commission on the status of women in 1970. Hilda Roach. ICA have been involved from the very beginning in a lot of legislative reforms which helped bring change for the better in women's lives, like equal pay, the removal of the marriage bar, women's rights over property, and even dental and official optical benefits in their own right. A lot of the women, when they got married, they had to give up their Work. position and yeah. employment yeah. Yeah. Um, to join their husbands. And that, you know, even for some of the farming families, if the husband died later on, they weren't allowed to have the milk quota or any of the payments from the co-op society into their names. So they would have had to ask a brother-in-law or a father-in-law or somebody to receive the cheques and mm. then they would cash it and give it to them. Mm. I mean that, you know, the would have ICA would have been very strong in support of women and, and recognising their identity. Monaghan Federation ICA President Catherine O'Dowd. Here is Linda Haynes of Smithborough ICA Guild in County Monaghan. It's just absolutely amazing to think that women had to give up work mm. when they got married and even before they had children and imagine just give it up, you know, and so I think the ICA have really helped, mm. you know, years and years of hard work and yeah. And why are the ICA so good on that front of proactively, you know, rectifying maybe, you know, social wrongs in society, especially for women and everything? What's your own opinion, Linda, please? I suppose they, fee- they see it at the ground level, they see how life works and women in particular are very good at communicating with each other more so than men really you know and helping each other and just seeing what needs to be done and getting on with it. I say they were a great movement to get anything done if they wanted to. They could march to Dáil Air and and let the government know that they were around and they weren't taking any medicine from them. (laughs) Yeah, women. Yeah. Manana Heron. <laughs> and the last speaker was Kilkenny Federation ICA President Liz Dermody. Thankfully, nowadays, the ICA is still heavily involved in fighting the good fight for women everywhere, both in Ireland and internationally. ICA members Kira Cronin and then Liz Robinson. On a national level, the ICA is involved in the ACWW. It's a world organisation for women. And we give donations, and these donations end up, you know, helping women in poorer countries. Helping them with education towards engineering, laying water pipes. Irrigation systems. Exactly, yeah. As ICA, you can actually, you know, tap into international problems as well as national. And one global problem which our modern ICA is helping to address is climate change. ICA National President Hilda Roach. At the moment, obviously, climate action and biodiversity is a huge issue all over the globe. And this is something that ICA are very concerned about as well. Um, We have set up a subcommittee to deal with our approach or how we can help our members to be involved in this. And in this regard, Mary Fitzgerald of Castlebridge ICA Guild in County Wexford had this to say about some of their recent sustainability efforts. And they had a beekeeper at the last meeting talking about honey and we could buy honey. Yeah, and we're hoping now to make wax wraps using some of the bees' wax. Well, that's what we're hoping to do. Wow, yeah. that's an interesting one, isn't yeah. it? So we're very much, like I was just thinking coming along the road, there's no food waste. I, ICA is great about sustainability and fo- you know, like saving money and also not wasting food or not wasting materials. We need bees for pollination, you know, so it's the importance of bees in our food culture as well. So it's, it's educating people in the need for all that as well. Mary Darcy of Ballyfad ICA Guild in County Wexford. And then the use of the beeswax then to make the wraps and stuff for to preserve your food. So it reduces cling film. So it's actually an ecological way of looking at things. And the thing is, we all have bits of cotton in our houses to make beeswax. Mm -hmm. And we can all put plants in our gardens that attract bees 
and butterflies and all that so the thing, plants are being pollinated and stuff so the circle keeps going. Up to now in this documentary, we've let the spotlight fall primarily on the Irish Countrywomen's Association, or ICA, in a national and international context. But what about the 400 plus ICA girls active in local communities throughout our modern Ireland? What do they get up to? Now to try find out, I visited County Mayo and got talking with some members of Bunny Conlon ICA Guild. Guild President Margaret Upton. Currently we have 36 members and they range in age from a mother of an eight-year-old originally from Latvia who has joined the community up to an 89-year-old. And the organisation supports and celebrates all of them. And if you feel strongly about something and you're prepared to share and, you know, convince the ladies, anything is possible. Or that's the one thing we've learned in Bunny Condlin. They'll give it a whirl and they'll, you know, support you. I'm a newbie to the group and it's been a blast, an absolute blast. There's a few of us that are new members and we're the younger side. Right, OK. Um, Complete. Uh, my mum is a member and she's always going on about the, the she's very talented. I'm not a, a baker or a sewer. None of them crafts. I like quizzes. And the social side of it, going for the walks on the Sunday with group members or going out for a meal and having a chat. And I, I go down there and I have the gift of the gap. And I find it, it's almost like therapy. I am in tears coming out of most of the areas with the laughing and the, jo- and the banter. Lorraine, I go. Here's Mary Rafter to explain how she got involved in Bonnie Conlon, ICA Guild. I met another lady. She lived, lived near my mum and she says, why don't you come along? And I said, well, I will. And my husband shoved me out because we had four small children and it's just a very busy house. And I went along and I have not looked back. Really, Mary? Oh, why? Just well, they're a diverse group of ladies. There are so many crafts and activities and events and it's a very structured organisation as well. Uh, You will hear of women's groups and women's groups are brilliant. But there is this what's different about the ICA is it's structured. We have our monthly meetings. We have a county level. We have a national level. There are rules and regulations um, which aren't a bad thing. It just gives organisation and it allows everything to happen. Yeah. And as well as that, you know, everyone knows what's going on. Yes, and I even have a little role myself. Uh, I'm the Chakta. Um, so my my role is, um, thankfully, I don't want too much. Uh, nobody, you know, people will take on so much commitment, but mine is just to organise events, um, Christmas parties and outings and tours and, and, and such like. Um, We've gone to uh, ballon robe races. We've put on our hats and made our hats and posed for best dressed ladies. And um, we are planning our next outing is to the dogs in Galway. Now, I haven't a clue, but we're going to go. That's great. <laughs> and have, you've never been to the, the, the dogs before. No. As long as it doesn't go to the dogs. Is the guy says, ba- <laughs> absolutely, ba- absolutely. I couldn't, I couldn't avoid that one. I couldn't avoid it. Well, we'll be on the bus. And sure, look, at, we'll have a meal and we'll have a flutter and we'll have a great night out, which is something that happens every night I meet with my ICA friends. Ray and I go also have this to say about Bunny Conlon ICA Girls fundraising endeavours last Christmas. Christmas time uh, last year, I think it was around this, the 18th or 19th of December, um, along with our singing group and under the tutelage of Peter Nary who keeps these girls in line. Um, Carol singing, um, they commenced on Pierce Street in Ballina, um in order to raise money for the Bunny Conlon Youth Hub. So along with the women, uh, it's great for their mental health and well-being to give back to the community, but it was also to help to go somewhere towards giving for the next generation and helping out where we could there. 
and that we can get, you know, we can make a difference locally as well. Continuing my investigation into various ICA guilds around Ireland after my chat with Bonnie Conlon, ICA guild members in County Mayo, I next visited Ballyoskill ICA guild in County Kilkenny. You're in Ballyoskill and the guild in Ballyoskill was formed in autumn of, ni- of 1969. And I'm talking to Breda, is it? Oh Breda, that's me. Now Breda, how often do meetings take place? Meetings take place once a month, second Tuesday of every month. Unless there was an issue, we might have to change, but it doesn't happen very often. So once a month uh, here in this little room. So it lasts about an hour, an hour and a half. We have our meeting first, our social half hour. If we have a guest, we have a guest. And then we have our cup of tea and a chat. All done in two hours. I was new to the community and I didn't know anybody, so that's the reason why I joined. Anne Dooley. I really like the chat and, uh, you know, getting to know what's going on in the community because, you know, it's, it's hard to know. We're very spaced out. So it's, uh, you know, if you don't meet people and that, you don't know what's, you know, who has new babies. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not scan. No, who, no, things that's going on. Who might be sick and who won the lotto? <laughs> and here's what Karen McElwain had to say about her first time in Ballyoskill ICA Guild. I was terrified, absolutely terrified. What would these lovely ladies see or be interested in me for? And I was quite lost out here because I was a blow in and I was up at after rearing the kids and work, work, work and never really had time to socialise. And when Mem um, invited me up here, she brought me up and the crack was mighty. And I left that very first night. I think it was the best night I had in my life. Breda, Mem and Mary, all the ladies took me under their wing. They've taught me so much. I love the ground they walk on. They are my family. Geraldine, my God, she's so creative. She had us learning all different, um, she's gifted with flowers and crafts and everything. She can do anything. Mm -hmm. But um, then you had, Breda definitely had my back, had me under her wing every second. I am so thankful to every one of these ladies. They are the love of my life now. Rita Houlihan also had this to say about various activities which Ballyoskill ICA Guild engages in. We have had cookery demonstrations, even one of our old ladies does cake decorating. We have flower arranging with Geraldine here, usually at Christmas time, or if we wanted any other time she would oblige us with it as well. We've done crafts of different kinds, usually the guest person will talk to us at a meeting and then organise a class weeks or months later. Usually in wintertime we have the classes. Yeah, we know before we'd take on the class what it's all about. It can be card making, could be jewellery making, could be upholstery. We did classes at one point, uh, upcycling, but we did uh, small pieces of furniture, we revamped small pieces of furniture over one session of, of classes. Or we did some basket making. What's clear from prior commentary is that the ICA helps to teach many valuable skills, whether in arts and crafts, cookery or whatever. Geraldine Palmer of Ballyoskill ICA Guild in County Kilkenny. Education is power. Uh, Since I've joined six years ago, I've been really educated in um, all the lovely women I uh, uh, have here around us. And uh, everybody brings something they're all diamonds in the rough and they come uh, we come and uh, we think that we have nothing to offer and the ICA is like a polish polishes you off and then you shine and you your craft or whatever you bring to the meeting or to the association to your guild uh, they will uncover it and give you the confidence to shine and that's what I love about the camaraderie of all my friends here they support us and give us that confidence to show what we can do. You think you you don't have a talent, and then they expose it, 
and bring it to the fore. The ICA is an educator too. You know, they promote education for women. You learn valuable skills in the ICA. The ICA, it's a third level education. No matter what night we go to an ICA meeting, we will always learn something. And after my visit to Ballyoskill ICA Guild in County Kilkenny, I next met up with several members of a certain County Dublin ICA Guild, and here they are to introduce themselves. Anne. Morning. Kay Byrne. Susan Casey. Now, we'll start with Susan. Susan, Susan, uh, what guild do you belong to, please? Um, we belong to the Swords Guild in North County, Dublin. Um, we have about 50 members and we're there for a long time. We meet in a community centre in Swords and um, we meet every Thursday night and we do a lot of different things, a lot of different hobbies, uh, crafts and uh, we have days out and it's a great way to meet people and especially for say new people coming into the town as well it's a great way to get to know more people as well so i'll hand you over to Kay now and she'll uh, and Kay, Kay, for yourself i mean swords ica guild in north dublin what do you lo- love about it and the wider ica organization mm. throughout the country well i'm only in the ica just a few years and the reason i joined it was after my husband died i felt very isolated and i decided to go up to the ica uh, reluctantly, very nervous, but when I joined I was made very, very welcome and since then I've made wonderful friends. It's given me a lovely social life and it's opened the world to crafts and uh, it's just absolutely brilliant and then every Thursday night you can look forward to that and you know that you're going to meet your friends there, you're going to work on crafts and it is something great and I would invite anybody to in- join and I know that uh, they'd be made welcome and there's a lot to learn. And yourself, Maureen? Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm like, hey, I, I knew about it, but I was never, I never did seem to have time to, 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 to do it. But eventually I was coerced to go on going and I'm so glad I've made, I thought at my age I'd made all my friends, but I've had close friends and I feel now I've known them for hundreds of years and lots of new skills. One thing, I never in my life did any painting. And we, we have these work days and craft days and we go and they, we can pick out what you'd like to do. And I started doing painting. I was extremely surprised at the results. It was lovely and very therapeutic. I was just going to say another thing we do, which we absolutely love, we play pitch and cut. And we love that. <laughs> we play that on a Tuesday How can you night. go wrong with the pitch and putt? <laughs> so it's absolutely lovely. We play pitch and putt. And of course, again, lovely friends. And we go for a cup of coffee afterwards. So it's lovely. Kay Byrne. Here's Anne O'Connor. And it's very satisfying when you make something. even though you How might be... satisfying, Anne? How, How satisfying? <laughs> well, I've taken... We did a bag recently. And I have to say, at one stage, I, rather, I would rather have eaten it than sewn it. But once it's made up, you kind of look and say, oh, I did that. And the same at the craft days when you do a painting or you make uh, some small little belt paint or whatever. And you bring it home and you think, oh, yeah, I did that. I sat there and I sewed it. So it's bringing back skills that I had, but I had forgotten about. And then also there's baking. Sometimes we might have um, a night where we all might bring something along if we're inviting another guild. So our guild will be asked to bake. So therefore you have to go and, you know, find something that someone else might make and you bring along. So it's bringing back crafts that we would have forgotten about. And just back to yourself, Sue. Sue. You meet every Thursday. What does a normal meeting, if there is a normal meeting, entail in Swords ICA Guild? Yeah. Um, well, once a month we have a guild meeting where um, the members of the committee stand up and talk about what they're going to be doing for the next three weeks. And for example, we could be looking at things like maybe going to Newbridge House to play croquet, um, going to the movies, um, going to the theatre. 
you know, um, different sports. Like we have had bowling, we've tried lawn bowls, we try anything that's out there. We haven't done hang gliding or scuba <laughs> diving yet, but uh, that's for next month. I haven't heard. <laughs> away from Swords ICA Guild but staying with the topic of the ICA in this documentary so far we've heard many contributors extol the friendship and support which the ICA offers now I had this question to ask Eileen Dorn of Tinnehealy ICA Guild in County Wicklow Eileen how long have you been a member of Tinnehealy ICA Guild here in County Wicklow almost 20 years and how did you get involved well when my best friend died I needed friendship, I needed people to talk to and all like that. And my God, the Tinnehealy Guild has gave me more than 200% friendship and help in every way. And for anything that I need, they're always there. The ICA I would never, never forget. They were great to me when I had a few tragedies. I lost my husband and I was left with eight young, eight children. So eight. Eight. Yeah, the youngest was four. So then like the ICA was absolutely brilliant. It was great to have the camaraderie and to be able to go to that and come back to them. Yeah, it was great. Patricia Watson of Ballyoskill ICA Guild in County Kilkenny. Here's Anne Newton of Ashford ICA Guild in County Wicklow. We celebrate people's big birthdays or anniversaries. We help people when you know they've got troubles they're ill or they're mourning so it's really it is a big family we all have friends and i see you and you know it's no question that they're always there for you when you need them the friendship the support there's always support no matter what you can lift the phone your friends everywhere it is the friendship and the friends that you make and the contacts big thing is the, the friends that you make. You make friends that last for life. Earlier in this documentary, we heard about the ICA's education centre, which is called On Green On, and is located in Termin Fecken, County Louth. On Green On offers a vast array of courses from arts and crafts to cookery, pitch and put, dancing, yoga and much, much more. Now I recently visited On Green On and here's who I met there. Eleanor Hewitt. Now Eleanor, we're here now, this is your demonstration uh, teaching class. Uh, Tell our listeners what goes on here. Well, I'm doing, I'm teaching here in On Green On for the last 26 years. I do all sorts of needlework. So I do beading and all the embroideries. And this weekend I'm doing silk ribbon embroidery with the ladies. And we're working with pure silk ribbon as a thread. And we're embroidering through the fabric, on the fabric, to make a picture that will be framed. So what are the challenges of teaching ribbon embroidery? Well, the only thing that you really want is people to be interested. A good listener. I demonstrate the stitches and I'll demonstrate them several times if needs be. Uh, I usually do a group demonstration and then go individually to all the students. I have 10 in my class for this weekend, which is a nice number. You can get around 10 easy enough. But I'd always encourage people, I never tell anybody to rip it out. There's no no mistakes made in embroidery. There's design features. Oh, that's good. That's a good positive, you know, uh, so you know an uh, interpretation of the situation. Yeah, it's just to encourage them. And if they do make a mistake and pull a ribbon too tight, you can always do a second stitch over it and it becomes a padded stitch. So there's nothing wrong. <laughs> nothing <laughs> ever wrong. That's great. That's great. But you can see the work that they've done oh yeah i'm just looking at some of the work that the students have done wow it's so good we did um, a small little bit just as a taster uh, last night and then from 10 o'clock this morning until lunchtime they did that that amount they must be as proud as punch 
They are. They're, they're quite enjoying it and, and uh, eager to come back. I'd say you're as proud as punch of your students. I'd say there is a good soul nourishment, would it be right, Eleanor, you know, that here you are, you're imparting a skill that you love and, you know, and people are uh, the better for it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Like, when you see the enthusiasm of the students, you get enthusiastic yourself. You're energised, as it were, and it's lovely to impart knowledge. And after my chat with Eleanor Hewitt, I next met some of her students. Now, Maura, you've just been involved in the embroidery class there, run by Eleanor Norris yes. from Dublin. How did you find it? Wonderful. It looked very intriguing in the beginning, but Eleanor's a wonderful tutor and a great teacher. And it's making it very simple for us. And we'd all have a little picture home. It's framed and everything. That's great. Lovely, I, simple know, and was it a bit of a challenge at first? You know? Yes, a bit daunting. But no, it's very happy, very peaceful, very relaxing. Relaxing there now and no problem whatsoever. And I'm just talking with another good I- ICA member here, Maria from uh, Greystones, right. Now Maria, you were involved in the class. How did you find it? Well, I'm new to ICA and I'm finding this wonderful. So I'm up here at Green Anne doing this weekend and the ribbon embroidery, the teacher's amazing. She's taking her time and teaching us all and we're all at different levels. And she's just wonderful. So we're going to leave with a finished picture that will be framed. So everybody will leave with a completed project. That's wonderful. That's great. But and you've never done ribbon embroidery. I've done yourself. embroidery before, different but not, types. But not this type. Not this. And so it's all new stitches for me, and it's wonderful. And a great teacher and a great group. We're having a great bit of fun, aren't we, girls? And everybody helps everybody. I can't do this. Somebody hops in. Should let me show you how. And everyone's so helpful. It's just, it's wonderful. Highly yeah. recommend it. That's fantastic. Well, that's good, good. And look, I'm talking with Pat here now as well. Pat, how did you find the uh, ribbon embroidery class? Challenge at first. New techniques. Takes time to make new connections in our brains. But so good at stretching us. Pat Turl and Maria O'Connor also had this to say. We have an amazing mixture of women doing all of the classes this weekend and some are rural, some are from the cities, some are housewives, some are working wives, working single women, old, older women, grandparents, there's a total mix of women. Many ICA members engage in crafting for enjoyment and relaxation. Bronwyn Murray of Bohornabrina ICA Guild in South County Dublin. I found I was teaching, I was a primary school teacher, but I found that I needed to sit and have that. That was my, people do yoga, people, that was my zone out. <laughs> zone out was to actually sit and do a bit of stitching. And if I didn't get a bit of stitching or something in in a day, I could feel the tension building up in me. Why is it that it's so relaxing at Bronwyn? I think it's because when you're doing it, you have to focus on what you're doing and you don't have time to worry about the bill, the washing, the whatever is... is the crisis the in crisis. the world. It's when you're actually making a craft, you're in the moment, you're truly present making that craft. Breda Cahill of Bree ICA Guild in County Wexford. Here's Patricia Lavelle of Castle Bar ICA Guild in County Mayo. It's great for your mental health. It's great for taking your mind off troubles that you might have, and particularly for young people. It's and it's a way of getting together, and to, you can chat as you're doing these crafts, and it's a therapy in itself. Making something, actually making something, something that then you can see something beautiful, is really good for your psyche. It's good. Very good for your mental health. The Irish Country Women's Association, or ICA, is renowned for holding competitions in everything from cookery to crafts to creative writing and countless other activities. Breda Banville of Camros ICA Guild in County Wexford. Our federation ran a competition ICA has got talent and we have a number of categories 
and we had 16 entries and um, I was involved in a, in a novelty act, um, another breed and myself, and we actually won the event, the overall event that night. Congratulations, wow. So, uh, I'm in distinguished company. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll tell you one thing, there was a lady who participated, and I have to say well done to her. She was so nervous. She had suffered a disability earlier on, and she went out and she did her recitation, and she said, I have achieved something tonight. I have done something I never thought I'd be able to do. And she's a new member of a guild in Wexford, and she's just over the moon, and I think that's ICA is all about. That's what ICA is about. Mm. Mm. That's what ICA yeah. is about. It builds confidence. Yeah. It builds confidence. Yeah. When I joined ICA, I was afraid to open my mouth. And at the first meeting I went to, I can't remember what they were talking about, but I was dying to say something, and I didn't have the confidence. Margaret Sargent of Middleton, ICA Guild, in County Cork. And what changed it, Margaret? The friendship. The actual friendship. Because everybody was so friendly and so welcoming and... I was a stranger in Middleton, and I was, my older twins were 13 the first time I went to an ICA outing, and we went to Sherkin Island, and the heavens opened from the time we hit San Kilty until we got into Sherkin. Sounds like a good Irish outing, all right. And one, uh, one of the members went in, we went into the Jolly Roger in Sherkin, and she said, like a good lad now, put on the fire, put on the kettle, and keep the hot whiskies coming as fast as you can. <laughs> and a bit of music thrown in would be great. And lo and behold, after about a half an hour, a fella came with a squeeze box, and we sang, and we danced the whole day. And I decided, this is a fantastic organisation. I'm going to join this in September. <laughs> and I joined in September. There was no looking back. There was no looking back. There was no looking back, no. I mean, how can you beat the squeeze box and the hot whiskey? Yeah, Wait, like, please. About over half of them were pioneers. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we had an absolutely fantastic day. Liz McSweeney. I'm from Miniscara Balancholic ICA. And in my late 20s, I developed rheumatoid arthritis. So... I was in and out of hospital a lot. So I ended up one time in hospital and my very good friend, a next door neighbour, Noeline McCormick, came in to visit me and she said, when you're getting out of here now, you're joining the ICA with me. And that's how I joined. And, and my, did you know anything beforehand about it? No, no, I didn't know anything, but I soon learned. Um, my husband hasn't spoken to her since because he said I was never out before and now I'm never in. <laughs> he had you under his thumb and the ICA liberated you. Yes. It's the typical motif, isn't it? But I was a very quiet person. You, you, uh, it was. When, now I was. When I first joined ICA, I was very, very quiet. And uh, I got into drama. And I soon, soon found my voice, and it hasn't stopped since. <laughs> and how did you get into drama? Was it just that had a just lesson? With the, just with the I say, like Rita said, we uh, the one act plays. Um, we were sort of cajoled into it, really. You had to jo you had to do it. And that was it. I mean, I hadn't got a clue. Yet yeah, your arms were twisted up your back, and you went, and that was it. You had to represent your guild. I was very, very shy when I started. But then you have to be secretary, you have to be treasurer, you have to be whatever you're asked to be. And over the years, it, especially with computers and that, to print out notices about outings and everything, it got me into courses so that I'd be able to print out little pictured notices about forthcoming tours and write up minutes and all that. So it brings out the best in you, really. You know, and you think you haven't got it in you, but you, you get there. Margaret Dean of Drimmer League ICA Guild in County Cork. Here's Kier Cronin of Balnor ICA Guild, also in County Cork, to give her opinion. 
First of all, it's very important. I've heard a few of the ladies say here already you now how when they joined ICA they were shy and they weren't very self-confident and they built up their confidence. That's number one, really, because if you make a woman confident in herself, she'll bring confidence into her home and to her children. And I've noticed that, you know, through all my years in ICA, that some women would come and they'd be very quiet and in a few years' time they'd be running the guild, you know. <laughs> you bring out innate ability in people. But then it's very important for the community to have people who will form the community and gain the respect of the community, really, and unite people together. And one such group which has done Trojan work in recent years to unite people together and empower their community is Tinnehealy ICA Guild in County Wicklow. Madge Kenny. We set up the Ladies Committee on the Tinnehealy Show, which was the county show and it's run at a very high level. And we were the ladies' committee. We set up the stands for to do all the entries and what have you. And then we went on and we set up the tidy towns, which was a new concept in villages. And we, um, as I said, you go how which are people would laugh at you. You'd go along with a sweeping brush and a shovel, and you'd be picking up the rubbish and digging grass from someone's wall, and they'd ask you what are you doing. You go with paint and you painted the gate, and they'd say. What are you doing to my gate? And you just ignored it and went on. I'm Jackie Daly. I'm the president of Danmead ICA. Now, one of the big things we do is we deliver library books to the housebound. And we do that once a month. And I think we're the only guild in Ireland that are doing it. That's fantastic. So people out there who can't get out, love books, you're filling the gap and improving the quality of their lives by getting books into their lives that they want to read. That's it, yes. They tell us what, what authors they want and we tell the, li- the library and they will sort the books out for us. Down in our guild in our Dahi, um, once a year we would have a social night for the Arch Club, which was young people with special needs. Geraldine Finnegan of Ardahi ICA Guild in County Monaghan. And um, they would come out to us and we'd uh, provide a, a meal and a raffle and we'd have a couple of the local lads would there for a band and, you know, they'd have a good party afterwards and dancing and, in all fairness, they really lift your spirits because as soon as, soon as the music starts, they never leave the floor and they dance all night and the band goes to stop and they're crying for the band to, Keep going. I'd say and nearly you have a better time than anyone uh, nearly. It's just what it gives you such a lift. You know, I I always feel so, you know, uplifted the next day. You know, because they're just so full of life and enjoying. You know, just they leave their disabilities aside and can just go and enjoy life and you know enjoy the music and that. So we would do that, and we would all we also have a party night then for the senior citizens as well. So we used to do that in October. And um, it, there'd be a lot more maybe organising and that because you have food and maybe people maybe different dietary things and that. But no, like we had that again, we would have a dance and sort of thing. Then it'd be maybe a wee drink or two for, for um, but not overboard now, just one <laughs> or two. <laughs> but uh, and that would be it. Like, and all the senior citizens would actually look forward to that. <laughs> Staying with the topic of the ICA helping good causes, Susan Clark of Rock Hurry ICA Guild in County Monaghan also had this to say. The local hospital would be Cavan where the maternity is and for babies born early or even all babies, um, knit little hats because obviously their heat goes out through their head and uh, we do them in different sizes for maybe prem and small babies and normal sized babies and send them over and they appreciate them. I'd say the mums appreciate them as well, you know, because talk about, you know, the human element Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, a garment that's bringing warmth in every sense. Yeah, and even little cardigans as well, you know, if the baby needs to be kept warm, obviously they'd be in the incubators and that, but the little cardigans as well, a lot of people would do them too. So we try and do those things in the winter months and donate them to the hospital. That's fantastic. I'd say the hospital staff must, you must be, uh, the, you know, uh, they're saying, oh, great, the ICA, yeah. never let us no. down. No, they do. And uh, like there's a friend of mine and she works in the um, special care baby unit. 
and I have given her bags of hats and whoever's in charge, you know, and it wouldn't just be me, it would be different ladies would give me the hats as well. And um, I'd always get a wee thank you card. I'm not expecting anything, but just it just shows their appreciation of what's done. And veering away from various ICA efforts to help others, another core component of all ICA gills throughout Ireland is going on trips. Mary Darcy of Ballyfad ICA Guild in County Wexford. We also had a lovely trip to Wales where we went over to the WI. So we had the Women's Institute, the, women's the equivalent institute, of the Irish the equi- the equivalent, yes, in the UK. Yes, yes, and they hosted us. We had hosted them here, the Pembroke Women in Wexford the year before, so we were on a return visit, and it was absolutely fantastic. And Margaret Dean of Drimmer League ICA Guild in County Cork had this to add. At our latest trip, we actually joined up with St Luke's Guild from Cork. Um, seven of them joined us, and about two weeks ago, we went off to the Arklow Bay Hotel and we visited Glendalough and Rossborough House and we had a brilliant time and came home by Kilkenny. Um, so that was a beautiful trip. And, um, and it was all, all part of the ICA activities. All part of ICA. All music in this documentary was composed and performed by Cliff Wedgbury from Cork City when Anita Lett and several other pioneering women began the Irish Country Women's Association in 1910, little could they have realised that well over a century later it'd still be thriving and helping to improve the quality of life for countless women, their families and communities and the wider world beyond. More than anything else, the ICA is about support, friendship and fun. And Newton of Ashford ICA Guild in County Wicklow. Especially if people move into an area, new into an area, and they don't know people, come and join the ICA, make friends. There's an activity for everyone. We have sports, we have sit-down activities, you know, sewing crafts, outdoor activities. No matter what your interests, there's something for it in ICA. And if it isn't, it can be organised. just how does one go about joining the ICA? ICA National President Hilda Roach. Well, you can contact our central office on 01 668 002 01 or you can email admin at ICA.ie admin at ICA.ie and you will be put in touch with the guild or the federation the county in your area i would encourage anyone to come in and give it a go and see how they get on and have a laugh that's the main thing and a cup of tea if you want to get to know people join the ica you will be made feel very very welcome and we would love to have you in ica take a leap of faith and join (laughs) and they won't be sorry because it is magic and i love it with all my heart Funded by the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland with the television licence fee.